What is up guys? I am Jesse. This channel is Adventure Endeavor. My wife and myself have been traveling the country for almost two years now, fully remote. Uh, we live out of our fifth wheel and we have a Ram 2500 as our tow vehicle. So today I'm going to be doing some maintenance on, on the old tow rig. And I thought it would be a good idea to show you guys the maintenance so hopefully it can save you some time and some money down the road. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe and if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing the front and rear differential fluid change. It's a fairly simple job. I've done it before but I thought I'd make a video for you guys so you could save some time and some money. So specs on my truck, it's a 2016 Ram 2500 four-wheel drive with the Cummins turbo diesel. We are gonna start in the front because I think it's a little more difficult and I'm just gonna kind of show you the front but the process is exactly the same for the front and the rear. We did buy this truck brand new so this is the correct manual for the truck. I highlighted it here so everybody can see. Front and rear axle, Ram 2500 and 3500 miles, uh, 3500 models. Uh, they recommend synthetic GL5 SAE 7590 weight. You do not need an additive. All right, so we went with Valvoline full synthetic 7590 gear oil. We've always had great experience with Valvoline. Been working on cars my whole life, so this is a good choice. Like we said, we got six of them, and then we got some medium strength Loctite for the bolts that seal the differential cover. And this is a, a gel, a no, no drip formula. So I haven't used that before, so hopefully that's, that's nice. Let's, uh, let's show you the tools we need now. All right guys, so it's a fairly simple job. So just a few tools, some extra microfibers here and a big towel so we don't make a mess. And of course, something to catch your old fluid. We have a 10 millimeter open end wrench, an extension just in case, and then a ratchet with a 10 millimeter. Um, we're gonna put this towel underneath so we don't make a mess on the concrete in case, in case there's a mess. I don't think there will be. And then a couple of these so you can clean the gasket um, that comes on these trucks. 13 millimeter bolts in the rear instead of, I believe I said 10 millimeter at the beginning and you're gonna want a deep socket it helps for a few of them back there a little more tricky as well you might need a screwdriver and potentially channel locks because there's a couple little I don't know what you'd call them but basically things that secure the brake lines other than that it's pretty much the same one more tool that is extremely nice but not necessary is a creeper so I'm here at my dad's house I do not carry a creeper full-time on the road he has it so I'm gonna use it obviously you don't need it but if you have one makes life so much easier. We got our towel down here. Uh, we got our catch can. We're gonna go ahead and loosen up all the bolts and uh, go from there. Not sure if I mentioned the interval um, for these trucks, but they recommend every 20,000 miles if you have severe um, wear and tear and use. So the front axle, we do use four wheel drive quite often. We like to take this truck off road. I know it's a tow rig, but we take it off road. And then as far as the rear axle, obviously we tow a heavy trailer. So, you know, that's a lot of wear and tear. So we consider that severe. So we try to do it every 20,000 miles. It's really not that difficult. It's not that expensive. And we will link the fluid below and anything that you need for the job. We got all the bolts out, now we're gonna pull the cover. Pretty simple. And you got your gasket here. Like I said, this gasket is reusable. So, you're just gonna clean it up and we're gonna put it back in. Pretty simple. Do you wanna be careful of dirt and whatever debris? Try not to get it inside the differential, like I just did. <laughs> Do your best. Um, we're gonna clean it out with a towel, but we're gonna let this drip clean, and then we're gonna clean all of our edges, 
Look for metal, look for wear. The oil looks pretty good, to be honest. But yeah, let's get out of here and go clean, clean stuff. Unfortunately, when I pulled the cover off and the gasket, a bunch of dirt and debris got in here. So I'm gonna clean up this side with brake cleaner. And then the gasket, like I said, it's reusable. It's metal and it has rubber. I am just going to clean it with a microfiber cloth. And then on the inside of the axle, I'm just gonna wipe it out with a microfiber cloth so there's no lint, so there's no nothing. I personally don't like using like carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner inside the differential. I feel like it's okay on here, which you know, it might not be, but this is just how I do it. Make sure everything's clean. You don't want any metal in there. You don't want any dirt in there. Like I said, get everything super clean. Um, you might be tempted to put like some R RTV uh, silicone sealer on this. It's not necessary. Uh, last time we did this, it was I think 30,000 miles ago, so I'm kind of a little past due. But fluid looks great. There's nothing in the fluid. The fluid looks clean. I never had a, a drop come out of the differential whatsoever. So. All I use with this gasket, just make sure this whole side is clean, both sides, that the cover is clean, and then the axle itself is clean. So we're gonna go clean that now. So we're back under here, and we're gonna make sure this whole surface is clean. There's a bit of dirt and grime. Um, unfortunately, some of it went on the gears. So we're gonna clean it out the best we can. It does look pretty good in here. There's very, very minimal um, metal shavings, which happens over time it is metal on metal in here but you just want to make sure there's there's no big chunks this to me is is very it's very fine very fine so considering there is loctite on these might be hard to see but there's old loctite on these the factory put loctite so when i redid it i put a little bit of loctite you can use a wire brush to clean them off so when you put them back in, they go in easily or, you know, we have power tools. So we're gonna be using the wire wheel on the grinder to just make it a little quicker. A few moments later. So reassembly is pretty simple. Basically the gasket can only go on one way to get all the bolt holes to line up. And then you're gonna take some of your Loctite. This is the gel, I've never used it before. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Just put a little bit around each bolt. I like to put it up, wipe it clean one more time because if you let it sit, oil is going to seep out and you don't want oil right here um, where it seals. So you want that clean and then you're going to put it on and then that way you can get a nice seal. One tool that you might need that I forgot to mention is a torque wrench. So they say 30 foot pounds of torque for these bolts. I happen to carry this because we run an Anderson hitch and you can pull it out of the bed with three bolts extremely quickly. So I carry this under the back seat of the Ram so I have it. I just did an adapter. 30 foot pounds is not very much at all. So just don't over tighten them. Just pretty much firm is what 30 foot pounds of torque is. So remember, same thing, we're kind of hopping around side to side, cross pattern. And uh, like I said, 30 foot pounds of torque is not that much. So don't kill them. Worst thing that could happen is you could break one of these bolts. That would not be good. 30 foot pounds, it's pretty, it's just firm realistically, guys. So everything is torqued down to spec. Um, if you don't have a torque wrench, you can do it the German spec, which is just good and tight. That's an option for you. As long as they're firm, you should be good. Just don't overdo it. And one last thing you gotta do before, can you see that? These drain plugs are actually a magnet, believe it or not. So on the very end, they have a little tiny bit of metal shaving. So you just wanna wipe that off, clean that off, 
and then you're just gonna fill up with fluid and uh, when a tiny bit comes out of fluid, you're full. That's it, simple job. Now the time to fill it up. A lot of people get crazy. I just cut the end off and just finagle it in there. Sometimes you might need a little piece of hose or something to help you out. But overall, it's fairly simple and I'll try to show you how much I have left over uh, after we do the front diff. So like I said, I just squeeze one until there's, I don't know, maybe like an eighth left in there. Then I'll start with a fresh one and then I, I basically combine the two and then I do the third as well. So at the end, I'll have one that I'll have a little bit left. But no special tool required. I did spill a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. And yeah, that's pretty much the job. All right guys, so that is it. A job well done. After doing the front differential, I believe I told you it said 2.3. For me, uh, we used two, almost two and three quarters, a little bit more. So three for sure should do each differential, uh, especially if you do them at the same time. That way if any extra, it can go into the back one, which I'm gonna do next. But the process is the same, pretty simple. And then I like to wipe everything down extremely clean so that way it's easier to look for leaks down the road. We will link everything below so it's easy for you to find. And like always, if you purchase from us, it does help us out and we appreciate that. But that's it guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. Hope we found some knowledge. And if you did or if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and we will catch you on the next one.